Hello, and welcome to this first reading video for uh, our class on electricity and magnetism. So these, video, these reading videos are designed uh, to, for me to just take five minutes and go over the reading for each day. So it's, it's no substitute for actually reading it. I mean, to truly absorb everything, it'd probably take an hour or so of reading, half hour, an hour. But really, it's just highlighting the main equations and maybe quickly summarizing what's going on in each of the example problems that uh, might make it easier for you to read if you're having trouble with it. So in each of these videos, I, I plan on around five minutes to review the text, uh, and then we'll switch over and do an example problem in each video. And it's designed to prepare you for the lecture. So the, the in-class lecture will go through this material in more detail, and we'll do a lot of practice problems in class. But this is just an introductory. So this video is all about Coulomb's law. Uh, in previous sections, we uh, talked about the fact that there are uh, positive and negative charges in the world. Uh, and this section is all about quantifying how big the force is between two charges. So right now we're just dealing with point charges. We're not going to deal with any complicated, like a charge spread out over a rod or anything. So we're just dealing with point charges for now. We'll learn how to deal with that more complicated stuff next chapter. Uh, so Coulomb's law is the name that we give to, uh, this is part of it, th this equation right here. Um, this equation is giving the magnitude of the force between two charges. So you, Separately, in the point number two, uh, they talk about the direction. So maybe point number two is uh, worth talking about first. So like charges will repel each other, and unlike charges will attract each other. So if you have a plus charge and a minus charge, they'll attract. Plus plus, they'll repel. Minus minus, they repel. Uh, so that's the stuff in blue. The equation is, you know, it looks a little scary with these absolute value signs, but that's supposed to what that's supposed to mean is all that matters is the how big that number is. It doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative because in separately you decide on the the direction. So what this is saying is that the how big the force is on either charge, and because of Newton's third law, they're equal and opposite to each other. The magnitude of the force on any one charge is the magnitude of each charge, q one times q two, those two magnitudes multiplied together, divided by the distance squared separating the two. So R is the distance between the two charges. It's not the radius of a charge because the, we're assuming these charges are infinitesimally small. They're too small to measure any radius. Radius is basically zero. Uh, and for an electron, we don't know how big the radius is. It is basically zero. Um, so R, don't think of it as a radius, it's a distance. So you might, you know, if it helps, you could plug in D instead. It's a distance between the two charges. And then uh, to make this an equal sign, we have a, a constant proportionality. So this is just a, a constant called Coulomb's constant. So this K is 8.99 times 10 to the 9 in SI units. And SI units for this constant look like this. So you know, we, we know that force has to be in Newtons. So we're going to be left, be left over with Newtons. And then the rest of this stuff, the meter squared divided by Coulomb squared, just cancels out uh, the SI units as they appear here. So as long as you plug in each Q in terms of Coulombs, so measure charges in terms of coulombs and measure distance in terms of meters, then those units will cancel out and you're left with the SI units for force or newtons. Okay. So in the book, uh, just give some pictures for uh, the directions on, the, on these two things and emphasizing with equal size arrows that they're, they're equal and opposite, uh, again, from Newton's third law. So I talked about this constant. Another one that you need to be aware of is the, uh, the charge of an electron. So a coulomb is a huge amount of charge. Uh, it's something like 10 to the 19 electrons, you know, the inverse of this number um, uh, in, in charge. Uh, any one electron has this amount of charge, you know, a really small amount number of coulombs. So one coulomb is a huge amount of charge. The charge of an electron or the charge of a proton have the same magnitude, and it's this value in SI units. Uh, and we use the, le the letter E for this. So E is the magnitude of that charge. Um, We'll worry about this constant uh, in a couple of lectures. This is another way. So, so this equation for Coulomb's law makes it's easiest to make sense of with K. Um, we're going to learn about another constant that makes most other equations more simple. So simpler. <laughs> um, Coulomb's law happens to be simpler with K, but most equations, Gauss's law is the first time we're going to encounter it. Most equations are in electricity and magnetism are simpler in terms of this constant. So, uh, so when we need it, it it's here. That's called the permittivity constant. Uh, and this is just rewriting Coulomb's law in terms of that permittivity constant. So the rest of it, the rest of this chapter, this section is uh, talking about examples. It's a lot of example problems. And it's reiterating that um, 
like if you have four point charges and you're focusing on the force on one of them, well, you look at the interaction between charge two and charge one. So that's some force on charge one, maybe attracted or, or repelled to that charge. And then the, there's maybe a third charge and then look at that one with, with charge one and then a fourth charge, look at that with charge one. And so the overall result, you just sum up all the contributions. And that's all it says. Uh, and again, just point charges because we're going to deal with more complicated objects later. Uh, so the main thing here to be careful of is that these are vectors. So th these, this is the vector sum. Uh, so make sure that when you're adding together uh, contributions to the overall net force on a, on a charge, you do the vector sum. So if you have like two contributions that are ones to the left and ones to the right, but they're the same magnitude, there's going to be no net force. You're not just going to add the numbers up. Uh, so uh, here's an example where the glass bead on the ground, it looks like there's a gravitational force and it looks like there's a force of attraction because they're one's negative and one's positive. So there's some force on the glass upwards and just based on the free body diagram here, it looks like it's not enough to counteract gra the gravitational force. So the normal force has to make up for it. So with that free body diagram, you can set up an equation to maybe solve for the normal force if you knew how big these other two forces were. Uh, another example problem looks like it. Uh, so this is a. Hmm. <laughs> so it, when, when you read the problem, it's actually a 1D problem. There, there are two charges along a line. Where would a third one be so that the net force is zero? The third one has to be on the, the axis. Uh, and I think there. So, so this picture is, kind of, I think, trying to convince you that it needs to be on the axis. <laughs> um, so it has to be on the axis. And if there are two positive charges, and you want to know where the third one needs to be placed, it needs to be placed in the middle, right? Because if it's placed on either side, then it's going to feel uh, that the, the direction of the force from these two contributions is going to point in the same direction. So the only way for it to even out, for them to cancel out, is for that third charge to be placed somewhere in between the two. So this sets up an equation for that. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then this is this is a, just a, a, an example problem getting used to the fact that they're vectors. So making sure that when we add two contributions, uh, to, when we add two forces together, we add the vectors together. Right. So that takes us to the end of the section. So this example problem, uh, what is the force on the negative three Q charge? Um, so lowercase Q, we haven't said whether it's positive or negative, but we definitely know that these are opposite charges. So whatever Q is, this is the opposite of that. So if Q is positive, then the blue one is positive, the red one's negative. If Q is negative, then the blue one's negative and the red one's positive. But either way, it's an attractive force. So we definitely know that the direction is going to be to the left. The force on the negative three, negative three Q charge is to the left because it's an attractive force. Uh, and the magnitude is given by Coulomb's law. So remember, this was uh, so that E has magnitude K Q1 times Q2. So one of them has charge Q. And the other one has magnitude of charge 3q. Or I guess q could be negative. So let's, let's write it this way. Uh, and the distance is r. And notice how if I kind of uh, ignore the, the absolute value signs right there, I get 3kq squared. And that thing has to be positive. Right? q squared is definitely positive and Coulomb's constant k. By the way, I'm using lowercase k and the book used capital K, but there's no difference between those two. Um, so this is automatically positive. So we can get rid of the absolute value signs after we uh, you know, combine them together and get q squared. So the force is 3k q squared r squared to the left. You, know, you have to indicate the direction if you're asked for the force as well. Um, and then what about if the, if the distance were doubled? Uh, so then our answer. Uh, we would just replace r with 2r. So f uh, with the modified version would be 3kq squared over, now the distance is going to double. So we're going to replace r with 2r. And so it looks like uh, this is only one fourth as big. This is 3 over 4kq squared over r squared. So, uh, and again, it's to the left. Assuming they're, they're still on this, this uh, horizontal uh, line or dimension. Uh, so it's one fourth the value, one fourth the original answer. Okay, so this is a, this is an example of a ratio style problem, uh, but just plugging in Coulomb's law right away. Okay.